Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I have with me, I have the privilege of interviewing the BKFC light heavyweight champion, Jared Warren. He is fighting December 21st, the main event, BKFC on the zone, Hollywood, back in the hard rock where he won the belt just in june yeah i like that jared, that, that's a cool venue to be a part of jared thank you for joining us today talk about the opportunity to defend your title back where you won it just six months ago yeah man it's beautiful you know i'm i'm uh i'm from the tampa area but uh you know fort lauderdale miami not too far away just a few hours south and um yeah, like I said, that venue's amazing. You know what I mean? And the fact that BKFC is able to consistently sell it out now is pretty impressive to me. And uh, they just have a great, great um, <clears throat> fan base down there. You know what I mean? They they all they love the, the bare knuckle and they all come out to support it. So, yeah, the fact that I was able to to win the title down there back in June and and defend it there um, next month is awesome, man. I'm excited. December 21st, it's four days before Christmas. You're looking to give yourself the best Christmas present ever, I presume. Yeah, man. I, I told my buddies, you know, everybody come down if you can. Like, I know a lot of people probably will be doing holiday type stuff, but um, I got some, some diehard fans that are going to show up no matter what. So we'll definitely yeah, pack the house. Talk about the fight, though. You're fighting Mike Richmond. Talk about what you expect from a guy like him. Um, any thoughts on your opponent? Um, first of all, I, I like Richmond. Yeah, I mean, we we chatted a number of times, um, and like his his wife or soon to be wife is actually really good friends with uh, my girlfriend Crystal, and uh, so we've all gotten along. You know, we always have, and we we always knew that there was a good chance that we would fight each other at some point. You know, there was. Um, there's a couple scenarios uh, in the last couple years where it almost happened. Like I was actually told whenever he was fighting Lorenzo that I was supposed to get the winner of those two. Um, and then, you know, as we know, uh, <clears throat> Lorenzo won that one. And then I ended up not getting to fight him because he went up in weight class. So that never happened either. But um, like I said, we always knew it was a good possibility. But I do like him. Um, he's the only guy in the top five that I haven't fought yet. Um, I'm a little bored with the <clears throat> with the uh, rematches, to be honest. So I'm glad to get some new blood in there. Um, and again, a lot of people make uh, comments about the ranking system in general. I don't really know who does. I think I think it is an independent company, but most of the time it seems like they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, I know he's ranked fifth, but I honestly think that he's a better fighter than the other four. And um, mm -hmm. and again, you know, I've never had easy fights so far. Not looking to start now. So we we did ask for this fight. You know, I know he was looking for it as well. So um, he likes to come forward. I like to come forward. So that always makes for an exciting fight, and almost always results in a finish. Um, you know, going the distance like last time. I, that's not nearly as fun. So uh, I'm due for a good, good knockout. Winning the belt in June. I mean, talk about how that felt. Because I mean, I mean, I see you're 40 years old. I mean, this is you. Yeah. You started off this late, you know. So it's you. You got to get it in right now. I mean, what? Talk about how that felt. I mean, because I, I mean, I read, you know, when you 20 years ago, like your dream was always to be a champion. Well, you're a champion now. Talk about how that 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 journey and 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 winning that belt and what that meant for you. Yeah, it definitely was a, a long journey. Uh, my, my first amateur fight, I was 20. Um, you know, I, I made it to the top of the amateur level. This was all my amateur fights were like kickboxing, Muay Thai and stuff. And uh, I won the amateur world title. And then uh, when I first turned pro, I transitioned into MMA. Um, you know, MMA was exploding at the time. And, you know, kickboxing had really kind of already faded out on the on the professional side, you know, it was always the kind of running joke. You turn pro for kickboxing, you retire, you know, like, unless, unless you live over in Europe or Thailand, you know, it ain't too yeah. 
So I did transition to MMA, um, but I only had three fights. I, I didn't necessarily enjoy it, um, just just because I'm not uh, a grappler or a wrestler. You know, I mean, those are those are awesome sports in themselves, and they definitely work. I definitely uh, respect all those sports, but um, even though we get paid for this stuff, like I've ultimately always done it because I enjoy it. So I do enjoy striking. Um, I don't necessarily enjoy the other side of it so um after a few of those fights i kind of thought that i was done for a while you know i just kind of i stopped training any kind of fight training and just lifted weights for a number of years um which helped me get up to like a healthy weight because i was always a skinny guy i was kind of a bean okay. you know when, when i was uh, okay. actually if you look my my pro mma fights were at 145 pounds yeah you know i mean wow. um yeah and i'm just as tall as i am now i'm six one so I was, I was always in shape, but always skinny. Um, but yeah, once I got into my early thirties and kind of switched to, to weights and everything, I finally put on some, some healthy muscle and stuff. But, uh, yeah, B, BKFC came back around, um, you know, Dave Mundell, you know, we all know him, good buddy of mine trained together and stuff. And I was friends with him just through the fight world in general before BKFC. And, uh, he, he had one fight before me. I think it was BKFC 6 had come to Tampa. And that was the first time I caught wind of it. And um, and then BKFC 8 was on the horizon. And um, one of my former coaches was just posting about it on Facebook. He's like, we got Dave Mundell. And we got a couple other people going to be on this fight card. You know, you guys come out, support, yada, yada, yada. And then since my wheels had kind of already been turning, I kind of like half jokingly commented on, and I was like, you know, you guys got room for one more. And, uh, he was like, he's like, Jared, just, uh, message me. So I did. And, um, you know, he reached out to, to BKFC and like, Hey, you know, we got a, you know, we got a guy locally, you know, if you want to put him on the prelims and, uh, you know, they were happy to do it. And, it just kind of took off from there. You know, at first I kind of did it as a little bit of a, not so much a bucket list because I feel like bucket list you have to think about for a long time. But, um, I had lost my last MMA fight. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and it always kind of bothered me. Like I beat the dude up real bad on the feet, but you know, he got me down and got the submission cause I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And, uh, so that kind of stuck with me. So I just wanted to get another win and, you know, First fight one got a good first round knockout, and then uh, then of course I got hooked and I was like, well, shit, I don't really have an I I don't have a reason to see why I can't, you know, how far I can go with this thing. So, um, yeah, then I started kind of making a real, real run for it and stuff, and you know, cut out all my, you know, going out and having fun and drinking and stuff. That I mean, really, like for a while, when I was just working full time. There's not much else to do. You know what I mean? You work, yeah. you, you try and, you know, you go to the gym a little bit to look good. And then, you know, otherwise you go out for food and drinks with your friends whenever you can. So, um, I just kind of, I cut out that side of it and, uh, you know, switched to really putting my time into training on all my free time. And, uh, you know, man, in the long run, it's, it's paid off. You know, it was, it was about a five year grind from starting with BKFC to getting the title, you know, different little, hiccups along the way but uh ultimately just stayed the course and and uh the rest is history man so i read that you're a firefighter are you still a firefighter even while fighting now yeah yeah i'm uh i got about 15 years um doing that as a full-time firefighter paramedic and uh you know it's, it's a great gig man like i I do, we do 24 hour shifts. So it's, you know, 24 on 48 off is the typical. Um, but they are pretty forgiving with, you know, if you need, you know, shifts off for anything, whether it be for, you know, family stuff or whatever, you're allowed to exchange shifts with people. So I do that whenever, uh, you know, I have a fight coming up, you know, I'll, I'll take extra shifts here and there to get some extra training, extra rest in, uh, whatever need be. But, uh, yeah, man, I, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of consider myself more of a full-time fighter and a, and a part-time, uh, fireman, but in reality, it's kind of the, 
the switch, but I think about fighting a lot more. And I, you know, like I said, all my days off, I'm, I'm in the gym and that's kind of what keeps me happy and motivated. But the, uh, even though BKFC pays us well, uh, I have my long-term retirement in the, uh, <laughs> in the fire department. So you're the Stipe Miocic of BKFC. <laughs> kind of, yeah. He's <laughs> probably not nearly as cool as that guy. He seems pretty damn funny, but, uh, but yeah, along the same lines, him and, uh, Chris Lytle too, you know, I, yeah. I he just retired, but he, you know, he had 20 some odd years in himself. So, uh, yeah. Wow. My, my brother's a firefighter. He's actually a captain of the Miami Dade fire department. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, Miami Dade is the, I think it's the largest fire department in Florida. Jacksonville second, then where I'm at here in Hillsborough County is third. So yeah, it's, that's a big old department. I mean, speaking of that, you know, you guys just had, the, you know, you mentioned to me before we jumped on the the hurricanes that came through and, and, and your situation right now. Did were you also working during this as well? Yeah, um, yeah. So Helene came through. Um, I mean, the, the night that I actually hit, I was off. Me and uh, me and Crystal were. We were actually staying up, you know, kind of late, didn't have anything to do the next morning. And it was around midnight and she was like cooking something and I'm like watching TV. And then all of a sudden she's like, babe, there's water coming in. And then like front door, back door just started flowing in immediately. Oh my God. Um, kind of a, you know, not the technical turn of a flash flood, but that's kind of what I've always pictured. So I'm, I'm born and raised in Tampa. Lots of hurricanes, you know, come near and have hit over the years, but um, I've never had uh, flooding inside my actual house before. And I guess the way they explain it, it's kind of like the perfect storm as far as um, where the tide was, the temperatures of the water. It, it just it set us up perfectly for a flash flood kind of situation. And it just it hit out of nowhere. Like I looked out the window like a couple hours earlier and it just was drizzling out there. And I didn't think nothing of it. Once the water started flowing, I peeked out and it was like a lake. You know, it was up like two feet on my front door. Wow. Uh, nothing we could do to to slow it down at that point. So it was kind of one of those situations we, uh, you know, grabbed a couple quick things. I I jumped out the window because you couldn't open the doors if you wanted to. Crystal handed me the, the dogs and the cat and I threw them in the truck. And we uh, fortunately were able to, to get out of the neighborhood and get to a hotel and to safety. But um yeah, man, it, that was, I think, five, six weeks ago now. Um, you know, Hilton, that came right afterwards, was supposed to be. The yeah. Um, and that, like I said, I know it was more powerful, but it didn't really do much to me. I took some, a little bit of external damage on it from the house, but the inside of my house was already ruined. Like I said, we had to, I had to tear out all my walls, all my floors, um, cabinets, all my furniture, like lost all that. We, we pretty much lost everything we owned. Um, so yeah, so we had like for weeks, we were just, uh, moving from hotel to Airbnb to hotel every two or three days. Cause a lot of them were booked up mm -hmm. because people in the area. Um, even if they didn't get flooded, like I did, a lot of them lost power. So a lot of people were just booking up hotels just to have somewhere with electricity. Um, so we did that. We were like little, little nomads for a few weeks. And then, um, finally a guy at, um, at my fire department, he's like, man, I got a, I have an RV that I, you know, kind of rent out to people at random. He's like, I don't have it scheduled for anybody. He's like, you know, would you like to use it? I'm like, thank God. Yes. I would love to use it because, you know, I don't care if it, if it's tiny, it, I'm able to, it's parked in my, my driveway. So I'm, I'm yeah. still at my house now while we're rebuilding and everything. And, uh, you know, th thank God for friends in general, because really like I got, I've had some good guys, um, another captain from my work, he's been coming in on coming to my house on his days off, just donating his labor. Like he's, he's very like skilled individual kind of Jack of all trades and he's uh -huh. me fix everything. Um, then, uh, <laughs> then we had a little mishap where like I, I hired like a, a crew, like it was like friend of a friend yeah. and, uh, you know, I won't get into all the details, but, long story short, the guy swindled me out of some money, um, and made my house way worse in the process. He kind of destroyed it. And I, I wasn't looking over his shoulder because I was like being trusting, like, yeah. 
course. Uh, but he got me. You know, he he stole a bunch of cash and, and went back to his state. Um, but as a result, to kind of like counteract the uh, the unluckiness, um, this guy, uh, this guy Chris, that recently took us under his wing, and and this isn't me just trying to uh, trying to you know promote a sponsor but i, I kind of want to bring this up just because it's a very like oh, good. um i don't know uh, uncommon situation so this these guys from full blast he uh he's a blue collar guy you know like owns an electric company and stuff and once he found out about our situation he's like dude let me help you guys out and he's been sending over um workers guys that he like knows and trusts and have used before on different jobs to help fix like my drywall and my flooring and all the stuff that got destroyed. He's, he's doing it on his dime. And, uh, and he's oh, wow. actually, he's come over and got his hands dirty himself. You know? And it's, uh, it's amazing to me. I've never had, um, you know, not just a sponsor, but you know, almost anybody in general ever helped me that much. You know I mean? Especially somebody I haven't known very long. So um, definitely want to, and he, he won't even see this. The guy doesn't even use social media, but, I want to give him a shout out regardless. The guy, you know, he's done a ton for me. So I'm, I'm, uh, I've been more than happy to, to rep his brand here, but, uh, yeah, man, overall it's, it's been a, it's been a grind. Um, but I'm not letting it deter any of my training. You know what I mean? Like last yeah. month, yeah, I had to, I had to cut it back some, um, when all the extreme side of it was happening. But now that we've gotten in the groove of getting everything fixed, um, you know, I'm back full time in fighting camp. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So um, it was it was never a consideration to to not fight as a result of all this, and never crossed my mind. I'm, you know, um, situations don't have to be perfect or even ideal to to still you know get your training in and to go and uh, perform and get a win. So it's it's wild. I mean, you know, I, I live in South Florida, so to see how Helene didn't actually hit. Yeah. It didn't hit. It was just the band. It just the way it messed with the water. Because yeah. like I mentioned, I have a friend that lives up there off of Bayshore area, and the water went up to his front door, and that's never happened before. And then you have Milton crosses right over Tampa, and he had basically nothing happen. Yeah. Other yeah. than losing power, he had nothing happen because you know a few days earlier it was like, will my house still be here? You know, type of thing. Right. Will it be under eight feet of water? Um, that, that was just a wild thing. I mean, you, mother nature is crazy. Cause I've lived through so many hurricanes down here. It's, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous, <laughs> but, um, jumping in, I mean, it, looking back at, you know, you started way early in BKFC. I mean, your first fight was in, in, in October of 19. You know, I, I, I watched the other fight that you had your second fight against uh, Josh Dyer, September of 2020. You guys are coming in regular colored shorts. You know, now you have logos on your shorts. It's like, Talk about the the how the progression of BKSC and you're fighting on the zone, you know, the opportunity, the growth of the BKSC from when you started to where it is now. And of course, you know, Conor McGregor's in the in the picture, and he has definitely brought a lot of attention to BKSC and and you're seeing the mainstream really starting to notice. What are your talk about that and 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 being you know an OG of this sport? It's been it's been amazing, man, to to see them just catapult over these last you know handful of years. Like, um, yeah, going into that first card, um, you know, I went to uh, you know the fight gym that I was at back then, and uh, it was like uh, Feldman shows up himself and just a couple couple commanders. He's like, hey, you know, hey, I'm David, you know, and he gave gave me and like a couple of the other guys. Uh, you know, some t-shirts and, uh, you know, we took a picture together and did a couple like little, little interviews and stuff. But again, like at that point, like, I really don't know who he is like, you know, I knew who he was by introduction, but you know, I don't know him. And, and, uh, I would say at that point, you know, neither one of us was anybody that was, uh, you know, had any kind of, I'm not going to say fame, but you know, within the circle, pretty well known, you know, um, but yeah, dude, it's 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 crazy over the years. Like you know, uh, just to see the growth of it, they're they're constantly like one upping themselves. You know, like uh-huh. 
it's almost comical. Like you'll hear anytime, like, you know, Feldman goes on, like, you know, uh, you know, the bare knuckle. So like Brian Sosha, he's always talking about, he's like, this next card is going to be the biggest thing ever. It's going to blow the roof off. And then like, and then it does. And then like a month later, he's like, the next card, <laughs> card is going to be the biggest thing you guys have ever seen. And, and, uh, you know, it, it sounds redundant, but like somehow he keeps doing it. You know what I mean? Like he brings in bigger names. He, you know, he's, he's, I'm sure he's got bigger and bigger investors, you know, left and right now. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been amazing to just see the, the growth of the sport to where like, you know, at first I was like, just telling people what I was doing. They're like, you know, that's, that's pretty gnarly, you know? And then I'd have to show them like, yeah, this is BKFC. And, uh, now it's to a point where word gets around and you know you start to talk about it and people be like oh yeah dude I, I watch it too you know what i mean like they know what bk bkfc is and and uh and yeah then like you know like it's it's surprising to see how much has exploded dude it's, it's very impressive to me i mean you you mentioned like this is the biggest card this is the biggest card and watch what happens next i mean the card in june was massive yeah yeah, then you like, have Sturgis, where that was the wildest thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. It looked like they put a cage in the middle of the street, and there was like 15,000 yeah. people there yeah. on the street. I mean, I don't know if there were seats or not outside, but it, it was it was incredible to see that. I mean, how, how that looked. Then you have you have Spain, bananas. Yeah, now you're was- going to now, now there's Philly coming up. And I know he wants to have that be the biggest card. I saw that the tryout had a humongous turnout for the tryout. Like this is an explosion upon explosions. And now, you know, every every card is it's bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, it's definitely it's going in the right direction. I mean, I'm sure it's very exciting for you guys. Um, I'm not looking to step ahead of this fight that you have coming up, but you have in the past, presuming I'm gonna give you the presumption that you win your you defend your belt. You have called out Mike Perry in the past. Seems like everyone's calling out Mike Perry. <laughs> um, is that a fight you still want, or are you looking at uh, their potential third fight with this with Josh Dyer, who, you know, I've seen you fought twice before. Once that was your first loss, and then a, a no contest. What's next? I know you, it's against the rules to look at what's next. You have to pay attention to right now. But yeah. what what where does the future hold beyond? <laughs> December for you. I would, I, would, you win. I would still love the the Perry fight. Um, you know, initially, like before I had the title, I didn't think too much that that I would be on the radar or have a chance. But um, months back, like he he had actually mentioned me in an interview. Um, he was, I think he was he was on the um, MMA or the Era Hawani mm-hmm. show, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he kind of brought me up out of the blue. Like I just, I just won my fight in uh, in Leeds last okay. year. You know, I just just won the main event over there. And uh, and he had like messaged me afterwards. He was just like, "Dude, hey, man, good job, killer, blah blah blah." You know, being being cool. And uh, yeah, so not too long after that, he mentioned me, and he was saying that <clears throat> basically that you know he he has the King of Violence title. He likes. Uh, the 185 class, the best. That's where he feels most comfortable and most most powerful, I guess. And he said that if he if he would like to try and unify the belts, it would be at 185. And I, again, I didn't have the belt, but he was kind of he was kind of giving me some props. He's like, hey, you know, yeah. uh, you know, Jared Warren carries himself like a champ. Like he, you know, I think he's going to get there type thing. And uh, you know, I, I would that would be a, a good fight with him. And uh, so that kind of gave me some hope. I was like, well, shit, since he brought me up, maybe it's a possibility. Um, you know, fast forward a year later, you know, he had his his little situation with uh, Jake Paul and a bunch of that stuff back and forth. But also, you know, him and my, my teammate, Dave Mundell, have always had, like, some bad blood. You know I mean? They fought each other a couple times in MMA. And, and uh, Dave has, you know, really, really – elevated himself since then you know he, he really yeah. has become like one of the top pound for pound guys and uh so <clears throat> if i'm being realistic i think that the 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 hate between the two of them will probably make for a fight more of a possibility than 
the respect between me and Perry. You know what I mean? Because I do like Perry. I think he's a hell of a guy. Yeah. He's a hell of a fighter, but I would love to fight him. Because um, I yeah. did see Mundell called him out also. Like, you guys are both yeah. calling him out. <laughs> yeah, you know, totally different ends of the spectrum, but um, doesn't make more sense with him, probably. You know what I mean? Like, we'll see if, mm-hmm. that, if that ever comes to fruition for him. But, um, yeah, man, I think after this one, um, you know, with a win over Richmond, I, I think – we're going to start looking for, you know, bigger names. You know what I mean? Like, that's one thing I haven't really had the chance to do yet is, is fight somebody who is, you know, I, I kind of put us into two categories. I always say, like, previously famous and homegrown. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. like, like Richmond is very well known, you know, again, within BKFC, very, you know, solid fighter and um, has a good following and stuff. But, I don't think he had too much, you know, clout coming into it. You know, he kind of built himself here like the rest of us. Um, but, you know, a lot of these guys come in with big names from the from the UFC and and places that are really well known. And uh, once in a while, they, they'll throw these guys right to the wolves and want to put them against the top guy. So uh, mm-hmm. that is something that becomes a possibility. I would, I would love I would love to do something along those lines. So where does your nickname come from? Captain uh, Dead. Yeah, so a few years ago, uh, basically around the same time that I, um, you know, I was just lifting weights and, you know, putting on some size and stuff. Uh, I had a few buddies that were, you know, joking around saying I look like Captain America because, you know, I'm blonde and finally getting some muscle and stuff. And, uh, but then, like, I don't ever try and be funny on, like, a big stage, but when I'm, like, next to, like, my buddy, I'm always putting little one-liners and saying shit under my breath and stuff. That's the only time I ever try and say anything funny. And and I do it in the ring, too. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I can be, like, locked up with somebody, hitting them and be like, you know, you're not my favorite person right now. And then even, like, with uh, Jomi in the last fight, like, I barely said anything, but I think somewhere around the third round, like, he was drizzling pretty good. I was like, I was like, your face looks like shit right now. <laughs> And he's like, that, that affects people. <laughs> immediately, because he's like, yeah, so does yours. I'm like, fair enough. And we kept fighting. But, uh, you know, so that kind of became like the Deadpool side of it. And, uh, okay. you know, it just kind of became a thing. So, okay, it, okay. And I love the, you know, if nothing else, the originality about it. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hammers and a lot of beasts out there. But as of right now, mm-hmm. it's probably on Captain Deadpool. So, okay, okay. So you do you have tickets for this event available to fans who want yeah. to come check you out? Yeah, yeah. How, they, how, uh, how, how should they reach out to you? Um, with Instagram or uh, or Facebook is fine if they just want to DM me and kind of just give me a heads up what you need because they it, it's a little bit more difficult um, selling tickets when it's not directly in your hometown. You know, yeah. you got to order what you need and and uh, since they sell so quickly. And they do sell out. They usually want you to like try and like whatever you ask for, do your best to get rid of it so it's not a pain in the butt for everybody else. So, yeah, if people uh, know that they want to come and they know, you know, approximately how much they want to spend slash where they want to sit, I can I can uh, facilitate that for them. I will I will link uh, your Instagram in the description of the video. So if folks Thanks. want tickets, they can go directly to uh, Champ and get tickets directly from him. Um, that said, man, I, I wish you the best. I appreciate you coming on here with, with me. Any final words to your opponent? <laughs> I mean, Hey, this is, a, it, it's, it's the one place where if you're going to, if you're going to fight someone, you know, someone you're cool with, it's, it's for your, it's for a belt. It's not like, yeah, you know, you'd rather fight your people that you're friendly with for the belt. Not than any other time I'd presume. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I see, uh, you know, I see Richmond post a lot of stuff like kind of relating to his age because he's 39 he's like you know mm-hmm. like this old man's got one left in the tank or this and that and it's like well dude we're kind of we're kind of both fucking old but you know let's go out and show him that we can still put on a show with technique and violence and uh i can make a beautiful night of it you know what i mean absolutely 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 man but everyone thank you thank you again uh jared for jumping on with us i have with me the bkfc Light heavyweight champion. He is defending his belt at BKFC on the zone in Hollywood. 
on December 21st at the Hard Rock Live at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. It's a great venue. It's going to be a great atmosphere. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can get them directly from Captain Deadpool, or you can get them um, obviously online through the different you know ticket op- you know options. I, I presume Ticketmaster or maybe yeah. BKFC directly as well. Um, but thank you again. I appreciate it, man, and best of luck to you. This is Rudy Rodriguez Showmont with Combat Corner. We thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and share this video. Get the word out on Jared Warren and BKFC. Appreciate it, folks. A pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.